We're looking at using calisthenics as a vehicle to improve shoulder robustness and develop the athletic profile. It's not the be all end all, it's part of the amazing work you guys are already doing. It's just can we supplement it in some way to give you some more tools effectively? And how that fits into your program is entirely up to you guys. You can use as much or as little or not at all as you want. Calisthenics means beauty and strength. Those two components working together, a well-performed muscle-up should look beautifully strong if it's done well. And you guys will know like from a sports perspective, anything which looks effortless from a movement or physiologic perspective requires less effort. And that's where we want our guys to get to from a more athletic position of like, if, if movement looks effortless, then we know we're in a good place. We've got a good selection of movement options which we can utilize. If we can have better physical literacy, if you want to call it that, of the upper body, and we've got more integrity of the joint, what create what opportunities does that create around the park? If we're better in rooks and moors or in the tackle because we're just better prepared upper body, we can move in different ways, and we've got confidence to move in different ways, then that potentially allows our players to do things that other players can't, which I think is an interesting opportunity. If we have higher levels of proprioception, then we're better able to transfer forces generated proximally to the distal components of the body. So if we, can, if we have better proprioception around the shoulder, we can transfer forces out effectively, or we can stabilize forces in better positions. So we're generating a huge amount of force in a hit, it's coming through from the, from the chamber, winding up the force, and if the shoulder is a weak link because we lack the neuromuscular control and dynamic stability, which one's gonna go? The shoulder's an easy one because again of the architecture of the joint. So what I'm saying here is that we need to improve proprioception and we need to improve our ability to integrate that shoulder into full pattern movements to be able to then manage forces that we're going to get in a rugby match. What we do for an injured shoulder is perfect. What we look at is we go to establish range of movement, improve neuromuscular control, integrate it with the kinetic chain. Those are our principles from a rehab perspective. As soon as that player then is uninjured and returns into the strength and conditioning environment, we forget all of the stuff that we did from a shoulder perspective to actually make it high performing or to get back to a point. We just go get back in the gym and let's get strong, that's what we do. But these principles are well established in the literature and they work from a shoulder perspective. Where the physio bit kind of like stops and S and C starts, there's a gap in the middle of how do we continue to scale robustness and what tools do we have? And I think that's where we lack in the strength and condition environment, we, we just aren't equipped to scale stability. The other thing that's interesting thing around, like say we take the, um, the hand balancing perspective, hand is on the floor, we're now going to have to move the whole body around the hand and the shoulder. So we're shifting now, that fixing that end, that end position, and then I'm going to have to move my hips and my core and my shoulder. And if I can get into a handstand and I can hold my body position straight, I've got shoulder stable, I've got all these benefits from a closed kinetic chain perspective, but I've also integrated that into kinetic chain. You can't do a well controlled handstand unless you can synchronize some of this stuff. Can you create strength at end range? Can you create neuromuscular stability at end range? So the handstand, as we said before, is just a byproduct, potentially, of what I actually want, which is stability at end range. It's just a way of getting it. It doesn't have to be about the handstand for us, but for the athletes, I can teach the handstand. Oh, that sounds cool, a bit different to the shoulder pressing. So they buy in and we get engagement and adherence towards it. Okay.